Hey there, Blaine here. Check this out. I've got a new gaming channel called Forever 8-Bit. It's all about retro gaming for modern gamers. It's linked for you in this video's description and pinned comment. I'll look forward to seeing you over there at the end of this video. With its Sega Genesis Sonic 2 style interface, the PHN emulator for PlayStation Vita has both a retro style and modern underpinnings. It encompasses the 8 and 16-bit era of Sega to include Sega Master System, Game Gear, Genesis, and Sega CD. Let's get PGen set up on your PlayStation Vita so you can start playing your favorite Sega games on the go. Along with your jailbroken PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV, you'll need to grab two downloads from the GitHub. The first one is the PGen emulator itself. I've got it linked for you in the description. Scroll down on the page to the Assets section. Look for the file called pgen.vpk and click on that file to download it to your computer. Next up, open the web page for the PGen emulator itself on the GitHub. It's linked for you in the video description as well. There's some key information on this page you need to be aware of moving forward with the installation process. First thing of note is that you need to have what are called no intro ROMs in order for them to work correctly. This includes no intro ROMs for Sega Game Gear, Sega Genesis, and Sega Master System. And for Sega CD games, you need them in BenQ file format from the redump set. Next up, if you want to have preview image files in the emulator, you'll need to download the packs from here. It tells you which packs to grab for which system. Do make note, however, the Vita does not support video previews. So if you go and download all of those video previews, they're not going to work inside the emulator on the Vita version anyway. If you want the image preview files for the emulator, here's what you do. First, grab the Game Gear files here. Next, scroll down a couple of lines and download the linked file for Mega Drive, Sega Genesis, here. Next up, scroll down a couple of more lines. You'll see the listing right here for Master System image files to download. Finally, if you'd like the image files for Mega CD or Sega CD, scroll down and download the file shown here. Let's take a look at what's in your downloads folder. You should have the pgen.vpk file along with four folders. You'll need to uncompress these folders once you download them, but they'll have image preview files for each of the four consoles represented by the pgen emulator. Focus on the pgen.vpk file for the moment. We need to get it transferred over to your PlayStation Vita. And to accomplish that, we're going to use Vita Shell. Locate the Vita Shell bubble in the live area, then tap on it or select it with the X button. Then at the start prompt, tap on start or select it with X to launch Vita Shell. Once inside Vita Shell, connect your PlayStation Vita to your computer over USB. Then press the select button on your Vita to activate the USB connection. In this example, I have two File Explorer windows open, one that has the downloads folder on the left and the other that has the root of the memory card for the PlayStation Vita on the right. All you need to do at this point is grab the pgen.vpk file and drag it onto the root of the Vita storage. Don't drop it into a folder, drop it directly on the root of your storage. For the moment, you can leave everything just like it is on your PC and just transition back over to your Vita. When we last left your Vita, it was connected by USB inside Vita Shell. Press the circle button on your Vita to disconnect. From here, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the section called UX0. That's going to be either your Vita's internal storage or Vita external memory card. Select it with the X button. From inside UX0, use the D-pad to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list. You'll find pgen.vpk there. Press the X button three times to install pgen.vpk. Once to select it, once to confirm, and once to grant permission to install the application. Package files are like Windows installation files. Once you've installed the program, you don't need the installer any longer. With it still highlighted, press the triangle button inside Vita Shell. This pulls up a side cart menu. With this menu open, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to delete and select delete with the X button. Then at the confirmation prompt, select yes with the X button to delete the VPK file. To go back to the live area, press the PlayStation button on your PlayStation Vita, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold circle. You'll see the PGen bubble dancing in the live area. We'll need to launch it for the first time so it can set up some key folder structure. Tap on the bubble or select it with X, then tap on start or select it with X. You'll see the PGen splash screen for a few moments and then you'll be into the emulator itself. There's nothing to do here at this point. We just needed to launch the application so it could set up some folder structures on your Vita storage. So you can press the PlayStation button, then swipe from the right corner down or press an old circle to go back to the live area. You'll need to reconnect your Vita to your computer over USB so you can copy game and image files over to it. Navigate back over to Vita Shell, tap on it or select it with X, then tap on Start or select it with X. Just like you did before, connect your Vita to your PC over USB and press the Select button. 
let's take a look at the new folders that were just created on your Vita storage. To locate the folders for the PGen emulator and its subfolders, navigate to the folder called Data on your storage and double click into the Data folder. You'll find a newly created folder here called PGen. Navigate to the PGen folder and double click into it. You're going to find five folders here that are of interest to you. The first one is going to be the BIOS folder. You'll need BIOS files for the Sega CD if you intend to use those games. You'll also find subfolders for each of the four main systems. The Sega Game Gear, the Mega CD or Sega CD, the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, and the Sega Master System. Once again, I've put the downloads folder on the left side. On the right side, I have the subfolders for the PGen folder. And I deleted the pgen.vpk file out of the downloads folder to eliminate clutter. Let's copy the image files over to the Vita first, starting with the PGen Mega Drive folder as it's at the top of the list. Double click into the folder. I want to make note of something important here. All four of the image folders have a subfolder inside of them called mixrbv2. Remember, we're working with Sega Genesis or Mega Drive image files here. Navigate over to the Mega Drive folder on your Vita storage and double click into it. Once you're inside this folder, you'll need to create a new subfolder that was not originally created by the app. Right click, select new, and select folder. Name this folder media, all lowercase letters. Now you can simply drag and drop the MIXR BV2 folder from your downloads folder directly into the newly created media folder. Once you have this done, you can simply navigate back to the root of your downloads folder where you have the downloaded image files. Then on the File Explorer window for your Vita storage, go back one level. This will take you back to the PGen folder and all of the system subfolders. The process works exactly the same for all of the other image file sets and all of the other consoles. For Sega Master System, go into the Image File folder in Downloads, create a new file called Media, and drag and drop that folder directly in the Media folder. Same exact thing for Sega Game Gear. Locate the Game Gear folder inside your Downloads folder and double click into it. Locate the Game Gear folder on your Vita storage and double click into it. Just like before, right click, create a new folder, and name that folder Media in lowercase. Then drag and drop the folder with the image files directly onto your newly created Media folder. Navigate back to the root of your Downloads folder and go back one level on your Vita storage. Last but not least, locate the art files for Mega CD or Sega CD. Then locate the Mega CD folder on your Vita storage and double click into that folder. Just like the other three times, right click, select new, select folder, and create a new folder named media all in lowercase. Then drag the last image folder and drop it directly into the media folder. The reason to do it this way is once you start dropping all of those ROM files into those system folders on your Vita, it would be much more difficult to locate the newly created folder to rename it. Navigate back one level on the Vita storage to the PGen folder with the subfolders for the game systems. Then locate your game files and BIOS files on your system. In this case, I have them on a folder called Demos to make them easily accessible for the video. Sega CD games require the BIOS file, so I'll start there. I'm going to double click into the Sega CD BIOS folder. There are three files located in here. One is the European version of the BIOS, one the Japanese version, and one the United States version. So in this case, I'm simply going to drag over all of the BIOS files and simply drag and drop all of those files into the BIOS folder on the PlayStation Vita. There are BIOS files available for the other three systems, but usually they're optional. Now that the BIOS files are in place, let's copy over some Sega CD games. In this case, I have a number of games already pre-saved in BenQ format in their own separate folders, but you can't copy the folders over to the ROMs folder for each system, or they will not be read. You'll need to go into each Sega CD games folder and drag and drop over all of the BenQ files. Then simply drag and drop the entire list of BenQ files into the Mega CD folder on your PlayStation Vita. It gets much easier from here. I'm going to load Game Gear ROMs this time, so I'm going to navigate back to the root of the Demos folder and locate the Game Gear ROMs folder. With all of the cartridge-based ROMs, all you need to do is grab the entire list of ROMs, and they can even be in zip format, and just drag and drop them right onto the system name that represents the ROM files. In this case, Game Gear. No need to watch paint dry, I'm sure you get the point. Just navigate back to your list of ROMs, in this case Genesis, Grab all of the ROM files and drag and drop them right onto the folder that says Mega Drive on the PlayStation Vita's internal or memory card storage. 
And last but not least, Sega Master System. Just navigate back to where your Sega Master System ROMs are, double click into the folder, copy whatever game ROMs you have, and drag and drop them onto the folder that says SMS on your Vita. Now you can close out any instances of File Explorer because you are done with your PC. Time to transition back over to the Vita for the remainder of the guide. Now that you're back on your Vita, disconnect it from your PC by pressing the circle button. You're also done with Vita Shell at this point. Press the PlayStation button on your PlayStation Vita. Then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold the circle button to go back to the live area. Now you're ready to launch PGen and take advantage of all of the benefits it has to offer. Tap on PGen in the live area or select it with the X button. Then tap on Start or select it with X. This time, once it gets past the splash screen, you'll see all of the preview images in the emulator. You can access the menu settings by pressing the Start button on your PlayStation Vita. Here you can make changes to settings and then press the Start button to save them. You can scroll through the various consoles available to you by pressing the right and left shoulder button. To launch a game, move the highlight down to select the title and press the X button to start it. And sure enough, the emulator was able to read the BIOS files and it also read the virtual Sega CD disc with no challenge. Don't forget to check out the new Forever 8-Bit channel shown on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment. Your eyeballs will thank you for it.